All right, so the Manta token airdrop is now live. And if you are eligible for Manta tokens, you can now go and claim them. And so in today's video, I'm gonna walk you through how to claim your Manta tokens, how to add them to your wallet, how you can sell them if you want to, and other things that you can do with your tokens, including stake. And then I'll tell you what I plan to do with mine. So for starters, there are two separate claims on two websites. This one here is the Into the Blue retroactive claim, where people were rewarded with Manta tokens for participating in Galaxy Quests and for interacting with the chain last year. Then there's the New Paradigm campaign page where you can claim Manta tokens if you bridged ETH or USDC via this campaign. So once you are ready to claim, go to the big button that says claim and then select which NFTs you want to cash in. When you do that, it will tell you how many tokens you're gonna get. Then you hit that button and then confirm a transaction in your wallet. And it should cost just a few cents. Yesterday, it was like $10, $20 for gas fees because it was going crazy but it should only cost you about 30 cents at this point. And when the claim goes through successfully, you can click this button underneath that says add Manta to the wallet, and that will just allow you to see the balance of tokens that you have. And then when you open up your wallet, you'll be able to see the tokens along with your ETH and Stone or USDCE if you did that. So now that I've claimed all the Manta tokens that this wallet here is eligible for, I have 84 tokens and currently, they're trading for about 225 per token. So we're talking just under $200. Not a bad little stimmy, but not nearly as much as some people have gotten for sure. Now let's talk about where you can actually sell the tokens if you want to, and also about the staking. So if you want to sell your tokens, you can use Pacific Swap, or you can also use Izumi Finance. The prices that you can get on the DEX seem to be kind of glitchy, and you might actually be better off sending it to something like Binance if you want to get the price that's quoted on websites like CoinGecko or CoinMarketCap. However, if you don't want to sell it immediately, your other two options are to either just hold it in your wallet and wait for the price to go up, or you can try to stake it. Now, let's talk about some of the issues I see with the staking. For starters, in order to actually stake your Manta tokens, it's quite a process. You're going to need to download an additional wallet, so there's a special Manta wallet, because staking is actually only available on a different network. So your tokens that you receive from the airdrop are on the Manta Pacific network, and if you want to stake them, you have to actually bridge them to the Manta Atlantic network. And in order to use it, you need to install a separate wallet. So you can add the Manta wallet to your web browser. And then it's the same process as setting up any other wallet where you have to get a new seed phrase and go through all that. But then you need to go to the bridge for the Manta network and bridge your tokens from Manta Pacific to your new Manta Atlantic wallet. And only then can you go to the staking section and try to stake your tokens. However, the issue here is that the minimum stake for many of these collators, they're calling them, is almost 1,000 Manta tokens. In some cases, 800, 900, and in other cases, over 1,000, which as of the time of this recording, is 2,000 US dollars or even higher in some cases. And so that means that staking is only available for people that got a much more sizable airdrop. So the people that already benefited most from this airdrop campaign are the only ones that are able to actually stake because the minimum staking balance, in my opinion, is pretty high. Additionally, only the top 100 wallets in each collator, and there's 10 or 15 of them, but only the top 100 wallets ranked by the amount of Manta they contribute will earn rewards. And so that's why you see the minimum stake amount being so high because people are dumping their Manta tokens into these collators. And then if you deposit any less than this amount, you're literally just depositing your tokens for no reason, you won't be earning any yield. And so while a couple of days ago, we were seeing announcements of additional airdrops for people that stake Manta tokens, it's now becoming clear that those additional airdrops are only gonna be available for people that got sizable allocations in this airdrop campaign or that are willing to buy a thousand Manta tokens on the open market and then come here and stake them. So in terms of what I am planning on doing, I'm definitely not gonna be buying more Manta tokens. However, I'm also not gonna sell them because I do have a suspicion that this staking narrative is going to play out and that in expectation of getting additional airdrops, people are going to lock up their Manta tokens and stake them. And so the price seems to be quite stable here in the $2.10 to $2.25 range over the past day. And I would not be surprised if we did see the token go up at some point. Obviously that's not financial advice and I could be completely dead wrong. That's just my suspicion and what I'm gonna be doing with my tokens. It's such a small amount anyways, the allocation that I got in this wallet, 
I feel like might as well just hold on to them and see what happens. Moving forward now, I'm definitely just gonna focus my energy on other airdrop opportunities. And as soon as the lockup period for the staked ETH or the stone is over, I'm going to bridge this out. But I'm not gonna swap it right now because the slippage is something like 7% loss you'd take if you try to sell your stone for ETH and then bridge it back. But if we wait for two months, we'll be able to withdraw it at a one for one parity. So I'm just gonna wait for that and then take out my ETH and move it to something else. Hopefully you found this little tutorial helpful. Thanks for watching and have a great day.